Welcome back. We're talking to Michelle Bodel. And uh, before we left, we promised that we'd be talking about Australia when we came back. Tell me about Australia. You, you've really traveled the world. Yes, I have. I've, I've seen your map on Facebook, and you've, you've been around the world, but we're only yes. going to make a couple stops, and mm -hmm. the next stop is Australia. Tell me about Australia. Uh, my last semester of college, I got the opportunity to study abroad through Houghton um, down in Australia, in Victoria, and it was pretty much one of the most amazing experiences of my life, just to be able to study at a Bible college and finish up my degree, but also to go and serve the community there. Um, it's a huge city is where I studied in Melbourne. It's one of the largest cities in the world, and I had the opportunity to be in some of the rougher neighborhoods, I would say. Um, and one, one program I was in got to help at a place called the Gatehouse in St. Kilda. And there I got to minister to people that were in prostitution and that were homeless and that were suffering from drug addictions. And when we think minister, we usually think, oh, I'm going to go spread the gospel and tell them that they need to be saved. But really, it was just as simple as helping them pick out new clothes and just sitting down and having a conversation with them. Um, I also got to help at a youth group and a kids club for kids that don't really ever go to church. Church. They get an opportunity to go to Sunday school from an amazing woman who has started her own program there, but they don't really ever hear much about Christ and just getting to sit with them and seeing some of the dramatic changes, even in their language, towards us near the end of our time there because we minister them one-on-one -on -one was profound. Um, I also helped with a divorce care recovery group for a week where you sat down with a kid and got to talk to them with the experience they were going through with their parents being separated. And then one of the final things I got to do, which I thought was really cool, was go into the public schools and actually share Bible stories with the kids there. It's called Christian Religious Education. It's something we don't ever dream of here in the United States, but they just have a completely different concept of separation of church and state there. And so it was really cool to actually go into the schools and play with these kids and share with them the stories of David and Moses. Let's talk about call. Uh, it's a word that we use a lot. I think it's probably confusing to many. Mm -hmm. uh, help straighten us out if we're confused about what it means to be called by God and how do we detect, how do we discern that, mm -hmm. okay? Sure. Um one of the first thing I like to tell people when they hear the word call is it's not always a call to ordain ministry. It's not always a call to the pulpit. Everyone has a specific call to go out and help the church, but also to just minister to people and show them God's love. So your call could be to be a psychologist. Your call could be to be a doctor. Your call could be to be a garbage man. You just need to go and follow what God has placed, the passion, and given you the gifts and talents to go um, do in the world. For me, it was a really confusing process because you, you've you always been told, like, oh, you know, go and preach from the pulpit, but really to be the church to go outside the four walls, too. And we need more people to take what they learn on Sunday and go and spread that through their actions to others in their neighborhood. We need more people like you in the ministry, wherever that happens to be. Mm -hmm. How do we attract young persons like yourself? I think just being honest and telling them that God has a plan for their life. It's that Jeremiah 29, 11 thing, but also realizing it's the verse that follows as well, that we need to be open to what God wants to, us to do. And we have to listen and just be in prayer with God because God wants us to communicate with him about our, his plan for us. It just doesn't twinkle down from the sky. He sure. really wants us to just be in that relationship with him. And through our relationship, this plan is going to unfold and he's going to show you what special plan he has created you for. Many of your generation have sworn off of the church. Mm -hmm. Tell me why. I think it's different reasons for different people. I think a lot of people just see the hypocrisy in the church that we proclaim to be this loving place and then we just shut the doors to them when they look different or speak different instead of just being open arms saying, we come, we accept you as you are just as Christ is. We seem to have lost that Christ on our focus where Christ went out and was with the people who were different when really in the church we all have been placed in this mold or told we have to be the same. And I think that's also why people feel the fear of the ministry because they want to be able to be different. They want to be able to fully live out God's call them in their life within the walls of it, being a pastor, a missionary, a psychologist. And if you don't get the freedom to do that, it's sort of very dampening. <laughs> What's the next step for you? Um, well, 
In March, I am going to Scotland to work at the Iona Christian Community for two months. And when I return, I'll be working at the church again, um, just trying to pioneer some new ministries as well as really focusing on children and college age students who seem to be the forgotten groups in most churches. And then um, in August, I'm starting Drew Theological Seminary to achieve my MDiv. I wish you well. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, um, and thanks to Michelle Bodel for coming all the way from Clearfield to be with us today. Thank you. You're welcome.